Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungvaluwa had a third concussion on Thursday night football recently, and a lot of people are wondering if his risk for CTE has significantly increased because of this. There was a paper published recently looking at over 600 deceased football players and found that the number of head impacts and the strength of the impacts were more indicative of developing CTE, not the number of concussions, but I'd like to ask an expert in this subject, and I have a colleague who's going to help me answer this question. Thanks, Dr. Rubin. My name is Dr. Betsy Grunch, and I'm a board-certified neurosurgeon, and let's talk about CTE. First off, today is National Concussion Awareness Day, so it's appropriate that we're discussing this topic. CTE stands for Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. Encepha what? Symptoms of CTE include memory loss, confusion, impaired judgment, impulse control problems, aggression, anxiety, depression, Parkinsonian-like symptoms, and progressive dementia. It's a degenerative brain condition that's associated with repeated head impacts. Basically, the more you get hit, the more your brain can be damaged over time. It has nothing to do with the number of concussions that someone has. It has to do more with the number of hits to the head over time. So those sub-concussive impacts, the minor hits to the head repeatedly, will lead to the development of CTE. And this result helps explain why 20% of the people with CTE never experienced a diagnosed concussion. The more repeated trauma you have to your head over and over and over again can cause repeated brain damage and an increased development of CTE. So basically Tua doesn't necessarily have an increased risk of CTE because of these bad concussions that we've witnessed, but it's gonna be more likely related to how many head impacts he has over the duration of his whole career.